What's going on guys? If you're looking to make some cool multicolored 3D prints, kind of like this one, this video may be for you, so stay tuned. All right, so this video is going to specifically apply to the Ender 5 Pro, which is the printer that I have, and then I chose to upgrade it to run a BL touch sensor, and that sensor is being ran in addition to the 4.2.7 silent board upgrade. This board gives the specific five pin connector to be able to run the BL touch sensor. Um, you can run the BL touch with the factory board, but you need an adapter, and this is the way that I chose to do it. And this is the way that I'm gonna show how to get everything enabled through Marlin to get everything to work. Um, the main reason that I'm doing this is BL Touch is working. I had some issues with it in the past, um, kind of worked through them and it was good. And then I started getting into some more complicated prints. I wanted to try to do something that had a color change halfway through it. And I found out that the M600 color change G code is not activated in the software or the firmware rather that you get from the Creality website. Um, so I started looking around, I had to do a bunch of research to try to figure out which options to enable within Marlin to get both to work. And I finally did it, and that's why I'm making the video for you guys today. So hopefully you can save a bunch of time and not do all the research that I did. Uh, so the first thing that you're going to do is you got to download a couple things. You're going to download Visual Studio, download that, follow the install guidelines, and go through. Um, while that's downloading, you are, all, are also going to want to download a copy of Marlin. Um, I use the current release of 2.1.2. That's current at this time of the video. Download that zip file. Um, and then once it's, it's available and downloaded, you're going to unzip it into a, a place where you can access it. Um, additionally, you're going to click on the configurations download here. That's going to open up a website. You're going to click on code and then download zip. Once that's open, you're also going to want to unzip those. So here are the two uh, files here that are zipped. Once you have those unzipped, you're going to go to your Marlin folder here and you're going to open that up. You're going to click on Marlin and then you're going to get to this section here that, uh, that says boot screen. You're going to go to your other folder that has the configurations in it, and I'll open up both these side by side. You're going to go to Releases, Configuration, and you're going to Examples. From here, you're going to find the printer that you have. So for this example, Creality, and I have the Ender 5 Pro, and I'm running the 4.2.7 board. So you're going to open up that. You're going to take all four of these files that are in here. You're going to copy these and you're going to paste them over into this other, other folder here, and you're going to click Replace Files in this destination and let those go through. So by this time, you should have Visual Studio already set up. So you'll open up Visual Studio. The first thing that you're going to do is go down here to Extensions, and you're going to type in uh, start typing in Platform, and you're going to click on the one that's Platform I.O. You're going to want to install that, and let that run. Now once it's installed, I do recommend closing out of Visual Studio and then opening it back up. And that just allows everything to uh, to run in properly. Um, it may take a couple seconds and then it's going to pop up here on the left. You can ignore these pop-up message messages that you have here. So platform IO, you're gonna, it's going to start with the home screen here. You're going to want to go to Open Project. Now you're going to want to find that file that is that you just copied those um, those files over to. So for me, I had them in my desktop. Oops. Let's see here. Marlin, and you're going to keep opening up folders until you get to the folder that has this platform I.O. in it. That's the folder that you want to open. So now once this is open, your files are open on the side here. There's going to be three main sections that you're going to want to go into. There's going to be a platform I.O. You have your configuration.h file and your configuration advanced file. 
All right, so once you open up that platform IO file, the first thing you're going to change is going to be this default environment. So you're going to delete this mega 2560 number, and you will put in this number right here, and I'll put all these in the description for you so you can copy and paste. So that's going to get put in there. I always get in the habit of saving. After I make, you know, a bunch of changes, that way something happens, it's easy to go back. Now, when you get to the end and you go to build it, if you happen to get a message, and this is going to be the message, it's going to say that that uh, that option build environment doesn't doesn't work, right? And this is something you may get, and it gives you a bunch of options. So that's that's one of the issues that I had. If you really start having problems, you can go to this website here, and you can search for the board that you have. 4.2.7 and that's where I got got that number from and just tried some of the different options and I found one that worked. So the one that I showed is good and it does does work for this. Um, so from there you can see that there's all these different names that are under the configuration file and the configuration advanced file. Um, you'll see that they all start with a hashtag define and then some of them start with this slash. So when you look at the files you see all these different options and slashes and hash marks and stuff like that. So if there's a slash, the system ignores it and it's more or less just a note. If it starts with a with a hash or a pound, that means that the system is going going to read that file. Um, so that's a little cheat sheet up here. So most of the stuff we're going to be enabling, with the exception of this one, which gets disabled. So it's super easy to do. You can just start. Um, you do Control F and it pulls up the search box here. And just start uh, typing in the description, and it comes up. So you'll see right here, define S curve acceleration, and we'll get rid of those hash marks. And you're just going to go down the line and start going to the next one. All right, so you can get lazy. You don't have to type all of it, you'll just have to search through individual axis homing however you don't want that one you want to make sure that it starts starts with the uh, define so define individual access homing that's the one that you want to change when you're getting rid of the hash mark so those two are good um, if you're working on the m600 you're going to go through and you'll continue and you make all these changes here um, so this will work you can you know if you're doing m600 only then this is fine if you want to be able to touch only then it's fine as well if you want to do both then both are going to work for you so you're going to make all those changes within the configuration file and the configuration advanced file so i'm going to go through i'm going to make all the changes i'll speed everything up by the way you can see me go through stuff and at the end we're going to build it all right so right here on this next one for the nozzle offset for this nozzle the probe offset right here these numbers here that i give are for the factory brackets that come with the bl touch if you have something for some other reason where you run into issues you can change these numbers to fix that offset so if you find that it's homing and it's like way off or it's falling off the end of the bed then you can change that All right, so we got the last one here. So once that's that's through and all set, you can just double check everything, and then you're going to go down here and you're going to click on this check mark. It's going to pull this up and it's going to start building. You're just going to let this run and go through. And if there's an error, it's going to tell you. And if it's good to go, it's also going to tell you. All right, so as you can see, the uh, the system failed, and it is nice enough and smart enough to be able to tell you what's wrong. So for in for this instance, I forgot to enable the nozzle park feature, which you can see is right here. Somehow forgot it. No big deal. Go back up in your configuration file. Nozzle nozzle park feature. 
right here. And now, I can rebuild it again. So, just like that, we have success, bright green. So, that's going to save your firmware file, and it's going to be saved into this original Marlin folder that you had downloaded. Um, so, this is the, the home for that file. You went into the Marlin file originally to copy those files. You're going to go into this .pio file, and you're going to go into build, and then you'll have the, the file folder with that. Um, environment change that you made and then within those you're just going to look for the bin file that has the date um, so if you make some changes and, and save it again and it completes it's going to add these firmware files um, so the one you're going for is whichever one you want with the date and then the bin file so you're going to copy this onto a blank sd card and then that sd card can get input right into your printer and it will reload the firmware in it. If it asks you about EEPROM, reset the EEPROM. And you'll go through and you'll set your Z offsets. It'll home. And it should be all set. Um, so what you do um, when you want to build something. So I have these little signs that that we're building. Um, I don't want them to be multicolor. So when we slice them, I want the... Oops. I want the top to be a different color that had the lettering come through and see them. So right when it starts changing over and building up, which is here, we're going to click color change. Now you can see that's going to be two different colors. You'll export this G code and you'll be all set. So hopefully this works for you guys. Um, feel free to, to go through your configuration files and do some research and, and see what else you can do. I know originally when I first started, this is way above my head, but it's super cool to be able to get something working and honestly my printer has never worked better than it does now now that i custom built and enabled all these options through the firmware so if you have any issues let me know i'll do my best to try to help you i'm not a professional i don't know everything about it but i can try to work through with you and uh thanks for watching <laughs>